Hello, we're back on the Virus Channel, this time for another interview with Cybertrash. And the first question, the first question is, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Oh, bro. I don't really eat fast food like that. I think, like, because I was like a gym freak for like, like a year and a half, like a year ago and shit. And then, um, I don't know, I just wasn't eating it that often. But I probably Chick Fil A. It's like the only thing, the only fast food I eat. I had Jack in the Box like a week ago, bro. I got like egg rolls from Jack in the Box, which is like so fucked up. It's like that, like that, like re, like reassured me to never eat anywhere else like other than <laughs> Chick Fil A. But that shit had my tummy in, like shambles, bro. It was fucked up. Yeah, that sounds that sounds OD sketch. I'm not gonna lie. Nah, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's like, bro, like where, where the fuck y'all get egg rolls from? This Jack in the Box. But yeah, probably Chick Fil A. To be honest. I fuck with Chick-fil-A. What's your order from Chick-fil-A? Bro, fucking spicy chicken deluxe. Um, pepper jack cheese. I usually switch out the fries. I sound like such a fat ass right now. <laughs> I, I usually switch out the fries for like mac and cheese. And then I like, I'll pour like the Chick-fil-A sauce in the mac and cheese. And then I'll mix it. And then I'll put the mac and cheese with the Chick-fil-A sauce in like, I'll like lift up the bun from the chicken sandwich. And then I'll put it like, yeah. <laughs> It's some, it's some big bitch shit, yeah. It's, it's OD, but that's America. Wait, do you switch out the fries because you don't like the fries or just because you prefer the mac and cheese? Um, Yeah, I don't really fuck with fries like that. I don't know. Damn. A lot of people give me hell for it. I don't really fuck with fries. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Okay, so the first question I have is pretty random one, but it was just curious to me the moment I saw it. But how did you get into managing Reef? <laughs> bro fucking reef that's my dog i love him little dude that's my that's little bro <laughs> but um i don't even know i think I, I like say it as a joke a lot like with my friends i'll be like oh bro you need management like i'll manage you it's just because like i have two managers and both a and r so it's like i feel like i and also like with somebody like reef when the music is so crazy and they're so talented it's like bro like i want to like do what i can to help and i feel like it's crazy because i keep telling him that i'm not his manager i'm like all right bro like first order of business as your manager is getting you a real fucking manager and he's always like nah you're, you're my manager this this and that but i don't know i try it, it just happened one day i think i made the joke he was like he was like yeah you being dead ass and i was like no nah, i was fucking with you bro he was like would you be down to manage me i was like yeah sure I've been doing a decent job, <laughs> like connecting him with people. I connected him with um, a few producers and shit like that. I think every single, every single meeting that I have with an A and R, or like every session I have, I like plays. Just because it's like bitch, like you, like you can't know me and not know who Reef is, bro. Like yeah. you have to know, you have to listen to this fucking music. That's fine. And um, I love him, though, bro. You kind of mentioned it there, but would you? want to manage other people in the future maybe um bro that's the thing like i i feel like if i wasn't an artist i would definitely want to be a manager it's just like believing in somebody and just like helping them like get to that next level like how like my manager did with me it's just like like sounds so fucking fun bro <laughs> but yeah i feel like down the line yeah um but like I don't even I don't even know how to manage myself or like I don't I barely care about my own career. It's like hard, you know. Mm. Like I feel like once I'm doing better, it'll probably be maybe. I don't know. If somebody's fine enough, I'll be like, yeah, bro, like I'll manage you, I'll put you on, connect you with people. And when um when you so say you said you have two managers, when did that happen? Oh man, uh my first manager, I'm not finna say his like um, he's not allowed to manage me because of the label he works at. It's like a whole situation. Like technically, he's not allowed to manage me. So, but yeah, he he found me um because my friend Eric reposted my shit on his story, and he was like my manager at the time was like a writer, like a freelance writer, and like he was like an intern A and R, and um he just like found it and he went through my Spotify. This is when I had like like bro probably like three hundred monthly listeners like. I wasn't doing shit. Like I, I was thinking about quitting music at that time. This was like early 2021, like March maybe. 
and he he found my shit. He was fucking with me, and then he DM'd me. It was like, awkward call. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely ghosted, dude. He's like some white guy. I was like, he's awkward. I was like, bro, like I'm finna ghost this dude. Um, this call was weird, and I'm not like used to shit like this. But he kept like pushing. He was like. I sent him my unreleased music and I told him about how I was like thinking about going back to school and like like just stopping music and he was like like you'd be fucking brain dead to do that like you'd be this fuck to like quit music like sitting on the shit you're sitting on so yeah he um he's been with me ever since and like the he was like yo like let's give this next drop a chance and then we released uh West which is like still on my Spotify and that that did well that got me like a lot of connections like I met a lot of cool people through that song and then yeah he's been with me since then and then he started working at the label he's working and um he got too busy so he brought on my other manager Jaren um she she works at RCA she's the best I love her so much and yeah they, she's been with me since um like December November but yeah no I love them so much brother like so genuine they're both and ours like I don't, I don't know if you know, but like anybody like watching this shit will know like who makes music will know that like A and R's are fucking the worst. Like, <laughs> like no artist wants to talk to an A and R, bro. It's always awkward. It's like vibes are always strange, and it's like it's yeah, it's all relatively predatory, like in nature. But um, yeah, no, they're both genuine, and they're like the least A and R A and R's I know. And so, are you actually signed to a label? Nah, right now, nah. Are you interested in signing or nah? Um, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, the, I'm I'm trying not to <laughs> say like too much because <laughs> <laughs> stuff is happening, and um, I think probably by the time this comes out, things might be different. Um in terms of my status <laughs> my free agency <laughs> status but um yeah no I, I i think i have this thing in my head where it's like being independent it sounds so cool like just doing everything by myself and fucking like being able to fully like collect the fruits of my labor like that sounds really fucking cool but you know bitches need money so <laughs> it's like i'm always open i'm open for any or as long as it makes sense and people care about me and like my music and what I got going on. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so how old are you? Where are you from? And what was it like growing up there? How old am I? Where am I from? Like, um, I'm 20. I just turned 20, like in February. Um, I'm from Atlanta. I was born in Miami, but I moved to Atlanta when I was like real. It was it was cool. I don't know suburbs, bro. Like, <laughs> um, it it was chill. I met a lot of people who I'm still close with now, who are like making music and doing like other shit. It's like art, which is cool as fuck. Like we all went to the same high school and shit. Um, yeah, it was chill, bro. I had a lot of time to like be on the internet, like <laughs> like make music and shit, like develop my interests and all that bullshit. It was it was chill. I, I didn't really. I never really had a problem with where I was. It was just, it's whatever, just suburbs, bro. <laughs> like North Atlanta suburbs. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody who's from there will know. It's like, it's, it's kind of hell because a lot of people there are hell um, and be on some weird shit. But I never like, I, I just exist, bro. And you currently still live there, right? Yeah. I, I recently moved like to like the country, but <laughs> mm. like I used to live like more so than like North Atlanta area. And um, if you had to move somewhere to a different state, where would you move to? Um, To be honest, I'd probably stay in Georgia just because I don't know, I fuck with Georgia. But if I had to move, probably, I'd probably move out the country to be honest. Um, I don't know. France seems cool. Like, French countryside, bro. I get like a little ranch, some animals, like, <laughs> like a cow, some horses, a chicken, a few dogs and cats and shit like that. That shit sounds um, appealing to me, but it's probably like in the future because yeah. I still got business to do, like in the United States, apparently. 
Um, yeah, probably like I don't know, like the typical shit, like New York, LA seems cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I move out to LA. I probably will end up living here at some point. But New York seems really cool. I don't know. I've never been to New York. It scares me. Like, why is that? New York just seems. I don't know. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> so many like people like so close together bro it's like you never know that apparently it's always some shit scary it's like it's like a system bro it's like a machine i don't know but i'm probably just saying that because i've never i've been told it's like a it's like a romantic experience like pulling up to new york for the first time <laughs> yeah it is it really is especially like times square and like manhattan and everything it's like mm. yeah it's pretty fun yeah, I don't know, but that shit scares me. I don't know. We'll see, bro. Yeah. Okay, so you said you wouldn't move out of Georgia. So yeah, tell me what's the best thing and worst thing about living in Georgia. Best thing probably it's like at least where I live now, it's like people. It's like not much going on, but like I don't have a problem with. It. Also, Georgia, bro. Georgia is like like I remember you said you've been to Atlanta, but like if you drive around like um i'm trying to think like i don't know georgia's just like even atlanta it, it could be like pretty fucking ugly sometimes like especially like downtown like but it's it's just a beautiful state bro i love the tree like the trees are pretty yeah <laughs> it's, it's a lot of green it's a lot of grass it's one of the reasons i don't it's a lot of hills and shit too it's one of the reasons i don't like because florida is like mad flat <laughs> I don't know. I just like variation, like in my environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I don't like, fucking, um, it's humid as fuck. It'd be getting mad humid in Georgia, which is like annoying because it's like wet and floppy and hot and fucking swampy, bro. It's, it's hell, especially when it's hot as fuck. It also gets mad cold. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, some, some of the people are weird, but it's like, like weird people are everywhere, so. Yeah, that's true. People are definitely weird in uh in Atlanta, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's very um they like it's not like LA or New York where you pop out here and it's like people kinda have a sense of like who they are or whatever the fuck it's like in Atlanta people will like delude themselves into thinking they're like the king of everything. Like they got something like decent going on. It's like the egos are crazy. I I mean the egos are crazy out here in New York, but mm -hmm. it's like when you're networking it's not like Everybody does something in Atlanta. It's just kind of like, oh no, the ego's like, ego's different. I don't that's, really know how to articulate that. That's fact. I actually, I know what you mean exactly. That's that's actually facts though. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's the story behind your name? <laughs> it's crazy because every time I get asked this, bro, I give a different story. <laughs> um, but I'm a I'm gonna keep it a buck. Um, keep it a buck with you. I think this is the first time I've said this publicly too. Um, I used to be on this app called iFunny, bro, and it's like mad cringe saying that, and I like regret saying it. But um, yeah, it was like this app called iFunny, and I I was on there heavy. I had a lot of friends on there. That's how I started making music because I met people on there who like loved me, and we like bonded over like listening to Joey Badass and like Capital Steez and like just shit like boom bap bullshit like rap, and um. Yeah, I got locked out of my account. Like, I forgot my password and my username. And then my friend, uh, Johnny, he gave me an account and the name was Cybertrash. And I was like, oh, like, this is quirky. So, like, I don't remember what my SoundCloud name was at the time. I think I was, like, in middle school. Um, I don't remember my SoundCloud name at the time, but I just changed it to Cybertrash. And I think I just been too lazy to change it. And that was, like, too fucking late. Like, <laughs> like, I hate the name. I hate it so much, bro. Like, I hate people saying it. I hate it when people call me that shit. It's like, it is what it is. Bruh. And I've been told it sounds cool. It's like distinguishable, but yeah. at the same time, it's like I know it's off-putting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like people people see the name Cybertrash, it's like, oh brother. <laughs> but I think it's cool that the music kind of um, like subverts that expectation of like the music sounding like what my name sounds like, which is like mm. cringe and like internet music. I'm not saying internet like internet music is trench, but like you you probably brought cyber trash. Like you could probably like imagine what type of music I would fucking make <laughs> just from that name. 
And um, do you have any names in your mind if you had to change it? Or if you was going to change it, do you have any in your mind that you would change it to? Nah, that's the main reason I haven't changed it, bro, because <laughs> I can't think of anything. Like, at this point, having to think of a new name and, like, give it a me, whatever the fuck, like, just sounds like so much work. I probably, down the line, I'll probably change it to, like, my government name. Mm. I'm not finna say it, but, like, <laughs> if it happens, y'all will see it, bro. <laughs> and so you mentioned the app, the I, iFunny, is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that app, but... And you mentioned, like, that's one of the ways you started making music, but when did that happen and what actually influenced you to start? It was, like... I remember, um... It's crazy because I'd wanted to get into music before that. This was like middle school. I think I was in the seventh grade. And um, it's, I kind of wanted to start making music before that. And I had, my brother was going to church a lot. And he met this dude named Justin, very sweet guy. He, I remember he gave me a, a microphone. It was an AT2020 and it was like an XLR. So, and I didn't have an interface or anything. He gave me a mic stand and all that shit mic stand mic but i didn't have an xlr cable or an interface so i didn't know how to use it so it was kind of just like sitting there for a while and then um i, I got on iFunny. And i met these people and we would like freestyle over text as cringe as that sounds bro we like have these like ciphers like just typing typing bullshit out just like on the spot and it was really just like i started off rapping like it was um it was like a lot of like joey badass capital like that type of music that like inspired me it's just like a lot of the shit that i was listening to at the time as well like kanye and then um i was like recording a lot of shit on my phone like literally just like holding my phone like recording like that with my headphones on like putting it into like a video editing software and shit <laughs> um it was it was all pretty dog like it was at all, all ass like garbage but it was fun and um i like had like previous experience using the video editing software because i wanted to be like a minecraft you like youtuber when i was like 10 so it's like yeah that's like it's basically and also like Lil Yachty had just like that's when like SoundCloud rap was like first starting to pick up like Lil Yachty just started popping like he was doing his shit from his crib and I don't know it was just like inspired me I was like damn I can do this shit too it wasn't as good but it was like I was doing it <laughs> and what age was you at this point? oh man I must have been like 13 damn. like yeah, like 13, 12. Was other people around you making music at that time? In real life, nah. I was like the only person making music at that point, like at, at my middle school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like online, yeah, like I'd met a few like making music and like a few people who like literally like made me like, like I would not be making music if it wasn't for them. Like I would, I would have never started like my friend Hoodie. He, um, he used to make music with me, um, and then he kind of, like, just stopped just because, like, real life happens, you know what I'm saying? You get busy mm-hmm. and shit. But, uh, yeah, like, he he put me onto a lot of shit. He put me on a drain gang really early. He put me on the um, peep and, like, the whole GBC, like, scene. And, I don't know, he, like, molded my taste a lot. Yeah, he, re- he really got me into that. It was really just, like, the people that I knew, like, over Kick and, like, I Funny and shit, <laughs> like, my friend. Uh, my friend Devon Grant mm. all them okay so you started out at 13 making the like boom bap Joey Badass inspired type stuff at what point did it transition <laughs> yeah. into what you make now honestly it, it was like a slow process because I was like rapping and shit but I was like um like this isn't that fulfilling like I was like this isn't that graphic so I think I have I have two accounts. I have multiple accounts now, but like um, one that like I I like share publicly is like my second account, where it's just my name, uh, Daniel, but with, instead of an I, it's a one. And there's still like songs on there from like 2018, like 2017, of me like experimenting with like indie indie shit and just like singing and shit. Because on my main account, I was still like rapping, and I was like scared to put it on my main. So it's like still songs on there. It was like a really slow thing because I was still releasing rap music on my main. Like every every month I would, or like every other month I would like drop some indie shit on my second account. And then eventually 
I think once once I got to the like 2020, I realized like, yo, me rapping is kind of cringe. So I'm gonna just do what I do better, like which is sing. And then yeah, like my sound took like a big change, like last year specifically. Like I met Veo, um, like Joey, all of them, and they like propelled me like way up here in terms of like sound and shit. And just like direction. So, okay, you uh, you started out doing the film recording stuff and everything. What point did you start using like? I assume you use FL. Uh yeah, yeah. now I do. At, at what point did you start using that, and how did you learn to use that? I think the first time I used it was I was like ten. Like I pirated it because I was like I like torrented that shit. I was torrenting everything, bro. Like everything under the sun. Cause I just found out about that shit, bro. I was torrenting everything, and I got FL. Cause um, I, I I had a friend tell me that that's like where Young Chop made his beats, and I was like, bro, I fucking love Young Chop. I love Cheap Key. So I downloaded that shit, um, and I was just making the ass. And then like I remember it was like I was making shit for like a summer, just really shitty beats, and then I never touched it again. And then literally, um, my friend John he introduced me uh, to Eric and Kim J. And Kim J was the one who was like, yeah, you need to re-download FL. And then he kind of taught me how to use it again. And then, yeah, it was really, it was like last year, bro. It was like, I learned how to use Like last year, I was using some shit called Adobe Audition before that, bro. <laughs> it was hell. <laughs> and so in current day with your sound, how it is now, the music you make now, do you often tend to write your lyrics or do you freestyle um i just punch in i like lately i've been trying to get in the habit of writing because i've been and shit and i don't want to waste everybody's time like sitting there and like doing 30 takes for like one one line <laughs> and shit like how i do like when i'm like by myself yeah so like i've been trying to practice like writing more lately but usually like i sit down open up fl like make a beat for myself or like get a beat and then just Punch in one line, punch in the next, punch in the next. And I'll just like think of it on the spot. I'm pretty sure that's like how everybody does it. It's just fast. And when did you learn to produce? Um, Like last year, more so like this year, like my production really took like up like this year. Mm. Like I, I got a, my ex-girlfriend gave me a guitar. <laughs> And then like, I just learned how to, or I still don't know how to play that shit, but like, like I know enough to like make a song, like play pretend. Yeah. And okay, you mentioned that about you make a beat and punch in. Is there mm -hmm. anything in your recording process in general that maybe others don't do that you do? Um, probably not. I. I take a lot of time. I experiment a lot because I really like, I tell people this all the time and they always laugh because they think I'm joking, but I have no clue what I'm doing, like ever. Like when I made Play Pretend, I like, like just a whole lot of experiments and like putting, it's a really simple song, but it's just like, just trying out different things, just taking time to like really like get comfortable with like the direction that I'm trying to go in whenever I sit down and try to make music. So it's just like a lot of random shit, a lot of small shit that I use end up not using. It's like a lot of trying shit out. I feel like a lot of people do that, but it's just like, that's one thing I noticed about like the way I work. Usually it's pretty standard though, just punch in, try shit out. Is there any tips you can give for people for recording vocals? Bruh, um, make sure you have a good preset, like a good bo like vocal bus. Also, um, fucking slow down your retune speed, bruh. Like motherfuckers be sounding like Bender from Futurama, <laughs> or like Karen from SpongeBob, like trying to go crazy with this auto tune shit. Like, bro, slow down your retune speed. I promise, your your natural voice is beautiful, bro. Um, auto tune is a lifesaver though. I always use auto tune, um, but just like relax with the retune speed. Also, just like if, especially if you're by yourself, bro, just like. Like, and if you're nervous or like your voice shaky, you don't have the confidence, just like scream. It's like, get all the ugliness out so you're not thinking that shit like while you're recording. 
be confident, bro. It's, it's your song. That's good advice. Okay, so what's your favorite song you've made and why? It's not out. <laughs> it's um, it's this song I made called Buffalo. I like preview. I like posted a snippet on my Twitter, um, like a few days ago. I think like two days ago, and that shit's been going crazy. That's that's my favorite song. I can't wait to re- crazy. Like either either that song or um, the shit I got with uh, Midwest with you. I can't wait to drop both of those songs. Those are both like it's like I don't know. Like as a kid. You always like, or like when you're younger and you're like making music shit, you always have like an idea of the shit you want to make or like the type of music you'd want to hear. And like both of those songs are like two songs I like would have loved when I was young. Mm. It's like a cool thing. No, those are definitely my favorites. Buffalo and With You. Do you have any release dates for either of those two? <sighs> Fuck it, but I know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I'm about to drop. Um, they're probably going to come out like, around the same time i'm i think i'm dropping a song in like two weeks that i haven't like announced yet i like finished it like last night it's like a song i started like a year ago um called sweet illinois but after that to be honest i'm probably gonna drop with you getting the scoop right now bro <laughs> but like after that i'm probably gonna drop with you and then after that i'm probably gonna drop low if i'm being honest and then i signed like a single deal back in march because it was like down bad on money so that's probably gonna come out at some point too i'm not I'm like mm. i don't know it's a little, <laughs> a little, little deal because I was like, I need the money bad. So I just did some bullshit. And how did the song with Midwest come about? Oh, fuck. Um, I I made this song and it was just like, it was like a one minute and 30 second song. And I was like, I was like, okay, this is done. Like, I don't think I need to add anything to it. Maybe I can make it longer. And then, you know, Niz, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he be doing his music streams and shit. I love him so much. He um he had Edgar on as a guest, um, like for the review stream, and then I submitted that song, and um, like it played. Edgar heard it. He was like, "Yo, bro, DM this right now. Like, I need to, like, I need to listen to this like every day." And then I DM'd it to him. He was like, "Bro, I'm obsessed. Oh, thank you. Like, thank you so much. Hopefully, I'm not like." He was like, I'm obsessed with this song. Thank you so much. Um, like, this shit is crazy. You're going to do, like, really big things one day. And I was like, that's what's up. Thank you. And then I, uh, there's, like, another part of this story that I'm not going to say because it's just, like, a conspiracy theory. But um, <laughs> I'll tell you about it after this interview, bro. But okay. fucking, um, he, one day he texted me out of nowhere um, and he was like, Yo, what if what if I got on this song and I was like, of course, bro. Like, fuck yeah. Like, I would love that. Like, the song needs to be longer. Like, you're crazy. So let's make it happen. And then he recorded it like a few days later. And then I got the I got the bounce back. And that's how it happened. That's it's fine. a sweet story, bro. It's, yeah, it's genuine. Yeah. It's really fucking yeah. cool. But yeah, yeah, that's a wholesome wholesome story. Yeah, so he's he's sweet. He's a sweetheart. Um, okay, so I see Hang Tight got added to the anti-pop playlist. How did mm-hmm. that feel when you saw that? Man, I fucking first it was play pretend the guy added, um, and then it was Hang Tight. So I was kind of already like, I was already like the the feeling wasn't like necessarily too new, but I didn't have any expectations for either songs, especially not Hang. Because I I think when play pretend dropped, I was like. Oh man, this better get playlisted or not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip my clothes off and fucking jump <laughs> off the balcony like some some crazy shit. And then it didn't get playlisted. And I was like, oh okay, like it got like sixty some, like seventy some thousand plays like without playlisting. So I was like, okay, like I don't need this bullshit. Like, I, like I people care about me and like care about the music. And then um, Play Pretend got playlisted, and I, obviously I was freaking the fuck out. And I was like, I was like hitting the like nays like left and right, bro, doing backflip. It's like out of my mind, like so excited. And then I remember I dropped Hang Tight and it was like the day afterwards, like two days afterwards it got added. And I really wasn't expecting it to playlist because I thought like Play Pretend getting playlist, it was like a one-off thing. But yeah, Hang Tight getting playlist, fucking. Remember I was in the car, I just got dinner with um, some friends. And then uh, my managers called me and they were like, Hang Tight, number, number two on, uh, 
fuck yeah baby let's go and i was like <laughs> Jeez. i was like okay damn okay they fucking with me yeah so that was that was a crazy feeling but um it's just playlisting i'm i'm obviously very great that's the people at spotify and shit, but you don't need that shit that's that's one thing for anybody watching you don't need that shit mm, that's still that's fire though yeah uh, no nah, especially for it to be like on a song with like one of my closest like cool fucking feeling do you have any tips for getting playlisted it's <laughs> no tips bro. <laughs> it is it is such a random thing bro i, I say run up them pre-saves promote your music right which is crazy. I did not promote Hang Tight right at all. I submitted it like a week and a half before it dropped. And uh, it only got like 60 some presets, but it got playlists anyway. So that just goes to show like mm. it's random as fuck. But yeah, promote your music right. Um, meet the right people. Uh, like surround yourself with great people who will push and like tell other people about you. Just like a good community, bruh. And also just like keep releasing music. Cause it's like, if you're dropping shit, consistently and it's good there's no way the right person for that shit so keep going and how long after the drop did it get playlisted uh for hang tight yeah it's like two days uh -huh. i think yeah because it dropped on a wednesday and i think anti pop like updates like on fridays that's fine yeah so i want to ask you when and how was you introduced to this scene? Bail. As fuck. Like, I mean, I like I already like I'd already had friends who were like in the scene, like my friend John and Eric, but I never really made an effort to uh, like join the scene because it seemed scary. And also like I was like, oh, I don't make hyper pop and I'm not gonna start making hyper pop because I have friends. It, it just didn't feel it felt ingenuine. So I was like, I'm gonna just making like any bullshit. Um, but I remember Veo found me on TikTok and they DM me. They were like, yo, like you have to, <laughs> I don't want to air them out, but like they're exactly, you got to be smurfing right now. It means like, like they, they thought I was a bigger artist, like who made like a second account or some shit. Mm -hmm. And I was just like releasing music on this. And I was like, I was like, I didn't know what it meant at the time. So I was like, haha, yeah, thank you. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> but yeah, they were, and they live in Georgia too. Um, and we had like mutual friends uh, from like the local scene out there, like in Atlanta. And then I ran into them at a show, like completely unplanned. And I was like, oh shit, like, hey. And then we like bonded instantly. It was so instant. And then they were like, yeah, like, I want you to, I want you to meet uh, Joey, Rory. Like he would love you, this, this, and that. And then they invited me to the Gorset Discord, the Niz Discord. And I remember I was too scared to like join like the VCs and shit. Cause like, I don't know these people and like, they don't know me. So it's like, I was like, I don't, I ain't got shit to talk about. And also like a full VC of people I don't know. Sounds like, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Like I'm finna like join that shit and just like sit there not saying nothing but i remember one night they were like yo we're doing a cypher um like join like i feel, I feel like you would kill this cypher and i joined the vc uh they sent me the beat i recorded my verse and then i played it for veo and joey and like all the other people who were in there at the time and like veo was the only person in that server that i knew like in that vc as well and i played it they all lost it was the pop cypher like the the i'm done cypher and everybody like lost their minds and shit they were like bro what you're crazy this this and that and then joey was like yo you want to join gorset and i was like i don't know what the fuck that is but sure <laughs> and like yeah like literally that that's it but just meeting people getting like i don't know just, just meeting people through that like just being in gorset um be friends with Veo. They, I know they introduced me to a lot of people like Nid, who's like one of my closest friends now. Um, yeah, just like that. And then just like, I don't know, I release music. People know who I am now, kind of. Oh, yeah. So mad organic. I don't know. That's basically it, though. So you mentioned uh, collectives. Well, Gorsa, mm -hmm. what, what is your opinion on collectives as a whole? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a positive I don't have a positive <laughs> I think it's cool I think it's cool that 
in a in a scene where everybody is so like driven to stand out as individuals they're able to get in these groups where they can make music together and connect and like find friends and shit because that's really all it is friends i mean some people in collectives kind of just like all about like like running their own shit up or like the community aspect of it where it's like oh like easier access for people to listen to my music it's like real like predatory uh for lack of a better term shit um but yeah i it, it's cool um in theory but i don't i don't really i think it's i don't know i don't, I don't really know how to articulate what i want to <laughs> say um i love gorsa i love i love individuals i just think the collective shit some people lean too heavily on it in my opinion um it's like yeah it's cool but it's like bruh you like you gotta make a name for yourself because out of a collective it's so rare that you have more than like three four people at a time really stand out like that and you got collectives with like 20 30 people mm -hmm. it's just like yeah. also it's just like the scene i've noticed some people are like really that really um, what sorry ingenuous sorry i don't know much that keeps cutting out i don't know what the yeah, some people are like pretty ingenuine. Mm. Yeah, I can but see that. I that's, agree. that's everywhere, bro. Yeah. Be yeah, collectives. Yeah, they they can be. They can be good, but I think I don't want to say a lot of them, but probably a lot of them are just destined to fail, I guess on the jump yeah no i mean everything has a shelf life bro and especially for collectives where it's like everything moves so fast in this music shit it's like you either break to the next level or you don't and a collective ends and like another one starts up or you just like start doing your own shit but yeah everything has a shelf life bro that's why i don't really i don't really like them not like a not a sustainable thing yeah facts and um what's your opinions on hyperpop Hyperpop, um, I, th I feel like they used to be negative. I used to be like, oh man, like hyperpop, like the term is like cringe, which it, it kind of is. But like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a cool genre. I think, I don't even think it's a genre necessarily. I think that was just Spotify, like some Spotify bullshit. I'm trying to like commercialize it. But I think it's a community and that's cool as fuck. Like hyperpop community is cool. A lot of cool, insanely talented people. Just like making shit at home, it's literally like just internet shit, bro. Like if you were on the internet, like when you were young, like playing like computer games and shit, like I and it's like the same shit, but just like with music, which is which is dope. But yeah, no, nah, it's it's cool, and I'm I'm really like like the people who pioneered this shit are insanely talented and like push the boundaries of pop music because that shit is like making this way into the mainstream now just the sound like certain elements of the sound that i feel like a lot of people who don't get their flowers really like what's the word like did like they pushed that shit they pioneered yeah. that shit but it's dope and what genre would you say you made personally um i said like indie like I, I make indie alternative music i guess you could probably say i make high pop <laughs> um but the things a lot of the like a lot of the I hate it oh my god I hate it. make hyper it's probably true at this point um I wouldn't consider play pretend a hyper pop song hang tight maybe um because of the 808s in there and shit. but I don't know I just I, I probably do make pop music as well but I think a lot of the music that I'm sitting on is like indie alternative R&B which is like yeah a lot of people wouldn't expect it, but yeah, it's just like the type of music I like. Mm. Uh, what's your opinions on TikTok? I think it's destroying everything. <laughs> it's destroying the human brain, bro. It's destroying everybody's brain. But it, it's it's cool, bro. From from a marketing standpoint, it's cool. Um, I feel like it supplements a lot of the worst aspects of like. Like 
the brain and it's like rewards. I'm probably saying a lot of bullshit. It probably doesn't make anything. Or it probably doesn't. Make, but um, like it like the attention, bro. It's fucking up everybody's attention span. It's fucking up like what we associate with like rewards. If that makes sense, I don't know. I don't really know how to. I gotta be drunk to really talk about it, bro. Then I start, <laughs> I start going on. But nah, I agree though. It's it's cool. It's free marketing, free free like literally free marketing. Like you put your music on there, like it your reach is like limitless, bro. If it's a good song or if it's a good video or whatever, like who knows? Like hundreds of thousands, millions of people can see that shit. It's it's cool. It's it's done a good amount for me. I mean, that's how Veil found me. That's how like a few other people. Um, so it's like I can't I can't knock on it, bro. <laughs> but I think in terms of music in the industry, it has um, it's I think it's had like a somewhat negative effect because it's like what like when you sign a deal, they have a marketing like what is that money going to? You know what I'm saying? Because you could just market talk like you could just market yourself on TikTok and boom, like you're you're ready, bro. You have your fan base shit that like you're doing all the shit that a label could do for you just by yourself and it's just like made everything lazy mm. and it's like you like a and r isn't that hard bro because go like you could go down your fourth stage and find like probably like 20 different artists within like a five hour period who've just like been doing shit for themselves that like i don't know and it's like i feel like now everything is about a moment especially whereas like like a few years ago, people just wanted like virality and shit. Labels were looking for like for virality from YouTube videos and shit that. Now they're looking for these moments that people are having on TikTok, especially. And it's just like, it's lazy. And it's, it's, um, it sucks because I feel like people aren't investing in artists. They're investing in these moments that they're having and they view these artists as moments. You know what I'm saying? As, a, as opposed to, like a project that's going on like a project that's being developed and i don't know they're also just not developing like they expect people to develop themselves like socially and all that shit. i don't know it's just it's ass but it's cool it's like very double-edged sword <laughs> would you say yeah. for newer aspiring artists would you say tiktok is a must yeah for sure bro what the fuck? That's the thing, bro. Like, I just talk so much shit about it, but it's like, get, like, post on that shit. What the fuck are you doing, bro? You'd be stupid not to post on that shit. Cause it's like, I feel like now, especially since there's so many artists, bro, it's hard to really, like, stand out. Yeah, it's a, it's a must have, bro. Motherfuckers would be stupid not to post on there. Yeah. As much as I dislike it, it's, it's easy, bro. It's free. <laughs> And what do you do in your spare time when you're not making music? I'm really not sure. That's something I have to work on. Because for a while, I would wake up and um, I, the first thing I would do is hop on FL and I'd just be on it like all day. And I wasn't really going outside. And it was fucking me up because it's like, what is music? It's experiences. It's like ideas, like concepts, creativity, like all that bullshit. You don't have any of that if you're not living. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you're not being a human being and experiencing human things, you're not going to make human music. You're going to make, like, ingenuine, empty bullshit. And that was something that I was struggling with for a while because I just wasn't going outside. Also, I play a lot of Valorant, which is, like, every musician, like, every musician in this scene's like, fucking kryptonite, bro, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, that shit had me in a chokehold for like two months straight. I like literally was not making And I was just doing that bullshit all the time. Yeah, like usually um, I like hang out with my if I'm not like playing Valorant or making music. I just watch TV. That's really just it, bro. I'm just a dude. I don't, I don't like like going to parties. I mean, I like going to parties. I don't like going to like bars and like clubs and shit like that, like functions like that. You said TV. What uh, what stuff? What stuff do you be watching? Probably, I love HBO Max and Hulu. I like. I was obsessed with The Sopranos for a while. Uh, I was watching New Girl for a bit. The Boys. Um, 
the boys is so good. I'm watching the bro, the boys is so fire. So bro. Good. It's so fucking good. I was watching the show called New Girl for a bit. I, thought, uh, I watch whatever, bro. I'm like easily entertained. Have you seen the new season of The Boys? I just finished it the other day. <laughs> so fucking good, bro. It's so good. It's so good. Um, what are your plans and goals for twenty for the rest of twenty twenty two? Um, just release singles. Um, make as much money as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, meet new people, bro, and get a girlfriend. Uh, fucking, uh, I got no clue, bro. Really, just that. I want to meet as many as possible. I, I, I just like want to make crazy music, make more friends. Um, yes, yeah, really, yeah. I can't think of anything else. Uh, hopefully, I can buy a car before the year's over. That's like always been a problem because I'm like unemployed, but music is kind of like, so like I might be able to soon, right? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. And do you have a EP in the works or an album? Or do you plan on doing um, that at some point? Yeah, it's a plan. I feel like every artist like works towards or works towards like projects and shit. I would love to drop an EP, I probably end up dropping one like I don't know if I'm allowed to say like February. Um, probably not this year, but it's probably just gonna be singles this year. Um, album, hopefully one day. And the thing is, I'm just like so particular about my music, and I'm so like I want everything to be cohesive. I want it to make sense, so it's like that's probably gonna take time. But yeah, EP soon, definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully it's cool. I feel like I, I put a lot of thought behind everything. What about a music video? Oh, man. Fucking hopefully. I haven't shot shit. I want to, though. I feel like I, I love music videos so much. And I'm such like a visual... Like, whenever I make music, I always like... I'm always like, damn, what would a video look like for this? It kind of like helps my process because I feel like it kind of grounds it really, like it brings everything together. So yeah, hopefully soon, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I play pretend video. That'd be crazy. I have so many ideas for that. But yeah, music video soon, hopefully. And if they do come out, then it'll be the craziest shit you've ever seen because it's like, I'm not, I don't play with that <laughs> shit. Uh, do you have any plans for merch? No. Nah. I don't know. Probably not. It'd be cool, but it's like... I feel like nobody wants to wear Cyber Trash merch. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like something I got in my head, bro. It's like, I can't imagine anybody wearing some shit like that I would make. But if I do make merch, it's probably going to be insane just because like I hate merch that's like artist names and shit. Like, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't force any, like, anybody who loves me, like a like a hoodie that says cyber trash or some bullshit like it's gonna be cool it's gonna be like you could actually like wear and not get clowned for it yeah uh where do you see yourself five years from now five years hopefully with a girlfriend <laughs> just like like a bad bitch bro. Like, I <laughs> um i, I want to be like five years I don't know. I want to be one of the biggest artists on the planet. I want to be like respected amongst people who I'm around, like my peers and shit. This is such like a job interview answer, bro. I'm so, <laughs> like a fucking school answer, but like it's it's true. Like I really do want to be like respected my music. Like I love music so much, and I think about the people that I look up to, and it's the thought of being able to work with them or being in the same space as them like gives me so many good like brain, f bro. I also, I want to be able to pay off my mom's house. Um, five years, yeah. No, I see myself being like insanely huge. Like, and if not insanely huge, then at least like everybody knows what the fuck the deal is. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody yeah. knows who I am. Everybody knows my music. And everybody knows like I make good shit. Like I don't miss. 
not to sound cocky or whatever the fuck, but it's like, I, I think for the rest of this year, I'm not going to miss, at least. But like, yeah, five years, bad bitch, a lot of money. Um, my mom's house is paid off. Hopefully, I'll be able to put me and like all my friends like in a crib, put me and my brothers like in a house. Five years is a long time. I can't think that far. Like, I don't know. I feel like in my head, like this is all possible within type shit. Like five years is a lot of time. Yeah, yeah just like huge. Just working with whoever I want to make, trying to make crazy music. I um, definitely stay away from the girls in Georgia. I'll say that. That's for sure. Trust me, round up. <laughs> I was just fucking with one. She damn near, she bro, she damn near like threw my whole shit off. Like talking about like the type of girl that would like ruin her career. Yeah. Yeah. God bless her. I mean, not really. I don't. <laughs> fuck with her, but yeah. God bless her in the sake. This like damn, bro. I don't know what the fuck you finna do. Yeah. But, like God, it's like still love. Like I love her, but it's like fuck you. But like I love you. But, like I feel. I don't know. I get that. I, as you can see, I'm not processing it well. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to say that maybe I didn't or anyone you want to shout out or anything? Shout out John. Shout out Nick. Shout out Eric. Shout out Diego. Shout out Bayo. Shout out Joey. Shout out Tyler. Shout out Jerem. Um, shout out my mom, dad. Um, who else? Shout out Reef, my goat. <laughs> um, one last thing to say. Um, yeah, no, just spread be yourself, do what you do, be nice to people, be extra nice to people. Um, love freely, openly, don't be scared of love. Um, and if anybody knows any, like, anybody who's, like, I don't know, like, trying to get with me, <laughs> like, slide in my way, bro, I'm single, it's fuck. I don't know, I'm just saying, like, I need, I, I need a throat yeah. go, bro. I, I need, like, an absolute, I need throatzilla in my life. Yeah, so if you know anybody like that, slide into to me. Yeah, everyone, yeah. Everyone just at Cybertrash in their DMs. I have to <laughs> Sorry, baby. Um, I got one last question. Mm. Okay, so you can travel to any point in time. And I'll give you examples. So you could travel back to Shakespeare time. You could travel to World War One if you wanted to, the dinosaurs. Or you could travel into the future 10 years. 20 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. Where would you go and why? That's a crazy question. <laughs> um, like, just once, I can only time travel once. Yeah. Damn. Would I be able to come back or no? Yeah, if you want to. Or, or um, I feel like I'd probably go into the future, like, maybe, like, 50 years. 100 years if the world isn't like over i feel like i should get a redo like if the world's like over <laughs> like yeah. whatever like mechanism i'm using should be like <laughs> earth is gone bro like you do not want to do that and i'm yeah if the world like isn't shit in like 150 years like 50 100 years then i'll probably do that hopefully everything is like cool shit, i don't fucking know um yeah. But, yeah if the world is fucked then i'll probably go back and yeah. Like caveman ages, like I feel like I'm like I relate. To like you relate to the caveman? Yeah, like I'm a pretty like Neolithic person. Like I don't know. Like I just like it'd be cool, bro. Like I like show him my phone. Like imagine like putting your phone in front of a caveman and like like forcing that motherfucker to like play Clash of Clans or something, bro. Like like tempering, bro. Finna to freak the fuck out. You can do anything when like, you show him you show him Clash of Clans and Temple. I mean bro, I couldn't think of anything else. Like show him like a YouTube video, bro. There's no Wi Fi. True, true. Or like I don't know, like I show him like a picture of himself, bro. This is you. Like this 
you, bro, bro, finna be like, ooh, ooh, finna lose his mind, bro. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's just the world hasn't ended. Okay, but so, okay, everyone go stream Buffalo when it comes out. Everyone tell the bad females Cybertrash is on the market, and yeah, appreciate you for coming on. Bro, thank you so much for having me, brother. I never got your name, bro. Like, you never told me your name. My real name? All right, whatever you prefer to be called, bro. Uh, I guess Dion. Oh, Virus. Dion. <laughs> virus. All right, I'm going to just say Virus. Thank you to Virus for having me. This was fun. A lot of technical difficulties and shit. Also, being in LA has given me brain damage. So, I'm virus. sorry if, like, this was, like... If I like couldn't articulate for shit, bro, or if I sounded dumb. Nah, you sounded good. Thanks, man. But, but yeah, hit me up. Stream my shit. Stream Veil. Stream Joey. Yeah. Stream Reef. Facts.